Well, right, my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a fresh episode of FM 18, The Coventry Conundrum. There's been a bit of a break uh, in the series recently. We did put out the review episode of last season uh, the other day. You will find that link above right now. Go get caught up. I apologise for not getting the five years in the Coventry Conundrum out just yet, but it is going to go out maybe in the next week or so. You'll understand when you see my schedule next week why I haven't got round to it. And next week's weekly waffle will explain all of that my friends but today it's time for some more Coventry conundrum but before that hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel drop likes on the video if you're enjoying the series to this point and hit that bell button if you want to become part of the notification squad because being subscribed isn't enough on YouTube that just lets you know each and every time a video hits the channel now this is episode one of the new season basically I know it's episode 53 in total but yeah this is the first one of our third season and it is going to be a monumental one ladies and gents because we're going to be taking part in not only the Premier League but the Champions League and it's going to be really really interesting we're only going to play one game today because I've got all of the transfers to show you and the expectations of the board for the coming season so without further ado let's get on with it because we've got a lot to cover let's do this Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so as always, we're going to start with the outs first, and then I'm going to introduce you to the guys that are coming into the club. I'm going to try and get through the outs as quickly as possible, uh, because we've got a lot of transfers this season to get through. Uh, so, we're, first and foremost, Brandon Sammy has left the club. £600,000 came our way. Uh, he was never going to be Premier League quality, so I just took the opportunity to let him leave, and he has gone back to Italy, and will be playing his football for Verona. He was one of those young players we brought in. He didn't quite work work out but we wish him well a lot like Brandon Sammy Glenn McCauley was another young player we brought to the club he came in on a free transfer but we've sold him for 700k to MK Dons uh, was never going to develop into the player that we wanted him to he did actually play a few first team games uh, didn't score a goal for the club when he was there but we wish him well uh, we hope his career goes from strength to strength now this one might surprise a few people, but I have sold Alar Samir. Now he was another player, youngster, bought into the club for next to nothing. He has left for 800k with a view to going up to about a million pound and has gone to Germany and will be playing his football for Frankfurt. When you see the players that have joined the club, you will understand why I sold Alar Sami. And plus, he was never really going to get much better than a you know quite low-level Premier League player and we just don't have the time to get him to that level. So I decided to let him go. If you watched the review episode, you will have heard that Borja San Amatero was a player that I was looking to release from the football club, and we have done so. £1.2 million for the player. I think we've done quite well, considering that we signed him on a free, so we at least made some money out of the transfer. Never going to be good enough for us. Never was really consistent enough when he had a chance, so we've let him go. Ryan Haynes was another player that I said in the review episode that I was thinking of letting go and we have done so, we've let him go to Middlesbrough for £1.2 million, we made a bit of money, he's actually worth a lot more than we sold him for which is a bit of a shock but we still managed to get some good money for him, he was in the last year of his contract and uh, I decided to cash in, he had spent all his career at Coventry so it's a bit of a shame to let him go but he just won't on our level anymore. Uh, Luca Valzania is another player that's left the club, ladies and gentlemen. We managed to get £1.7 million for the player. I think we've done very, very well there, considering we signed him on a free transfer a couple of years ago. Not good enough for us. When you see the centre mids we've got, you'll understand why we let him go. Now, this is the first of two players where we've made quite a lot of money on, and uh, I just feel like it was time to let them leave. Now, Patrick Roberts is one of those players who never really got going for us here at Coventry. He had a few good games... You know, in the 50-odd appearances he made in the league, he scored quite a few goals. But, um, yeah, he just never really hit the ground running the way we wanted him to. He was a big signing for us at the time. Uh, we bought him in on a, you know, a free transfer, but we've let him leave for £8 million. And he's gone to Celtic in um, Scotland. It, we're still paying a little bit of his wages, but it's only for this year because he was going to be out of contract anyway. So I think we've done very well to make that money on the player. And the last of the players to permanently leave the club is Casey Palmer. This one may shock a few people because he was pretty consistently good for us uh, and did very, very well uh, for us while he was at the club. But I just feel like there were better attacking midfielders out there. And I, even someone like Marcus Brown was just far more consistent uh, than this player. We managed to get £18 million for him. Uh, he was only worth 15 when he was with us. So, you know, we got a lot more. Well, we got £3 million more than he was worth. He's actually worth £22 million now he's joined Southampton. I really don't know how that works. It must be something to do with length of contract and the wages and whatever. But I still think £18 million for this player 
is just a job well done. We've managed to get some good funds into the club and it's helped us push forward with uh, the players that we've brought in. I am now going to show you, ladies and gentlemen, all the rest of the players that have left the club on loan. So as you can see on screen now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to go through each and every one of them, but these are the players that we have let go out on loan this season. Now, uh, I guess the most high profile ones are Fate Up. He's gone back to Brighton for another season. He had a good year last year and uh, I just feel like we're well stacked in the first team in that position. Uh, we've brought in a couple of centre midfielders, so I've let Ryo Ito go out on loan. I want him to get more consistent football because he really could develop into a top, top player. Uh, you will see then uh, quite a few youngsters have gone out on loan. Uh, Pierre Andre, one of our very promising left backs, Kevin Hayward, uh, Luke Hill, Ron Humphreys, Louis Bennett, Zach Tarode, and Matthias Rodriguez all have good potential to be very good Premier League players, so we've let them go out on loan. And we've also let Jody Jones go out on loan. I do believe he's into the last year of his contract. This one is with a view to go permanently uh, for £5 million. Pounds. I'm hoping he has a good season and Barnsley buy him at the end of the year. Well, we now move on to the really, really exciting stuff, ladies and gentlemen. We talk about the players that have joined the club. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is Musa Sila. He's coming on loan. He's going to be cover uh, for Felice Diamico on the right side of the midfield um, because we just didn't really have any players there after we let Patrick Roberts leave. Um, this is a top-notch winger when you're looking at his stats. He says two and a half star potential, but, you know, he's a good Premier League player, can improve. And we even uh, have a clause in the contract that says, uh, you know, we can buy the player for about £7 million at the end of the season if he's good enough. Uh, whether or not we exercise that, we'll have to wait and see what sort of season that he has. The next player to join the club is Gian Battista Di Gregorio. He is a uh, centre-back. He's come in on a free transfer from AC Milan. I'm probably going to look to loan this guy out uh, if I can. He's got pretty solid stats across the board, but he is a championship level player at this moment in time. It can develop into something a little bit better. Uh, he's probably though, based on his potential, going to be one of those players we develop to a point and then probably probably sell on to make a profit because I'm not sure if he's going to reach the levels of the centre backs we've got at the football club. Next up, we've got Vaclav Dorak. I think that's how we're saying his surname. He is a centre midfielder and he has joined us from Slovan Liberic for £300,000. It was just kind of a compensation fee and he looks like he could be a world-class midfielder eventually. He's 18 years of age. He's two and a half star potential at this moment in time with a view to get to about four, uh, potentially five star potential in the future. He's coming on £700 a week, big, con uh, like a long contract uh, and he's definitely one for the future. He's going to be playing the majority of his football in the under-23s but not going to loan him out. I'm going to keep him at the club just in case we get any injuries along the way. Next up, we've got Marconi, a Brazilian right back, and this is the guy that we have brought in, um, you know, to replace uh, the uh, Sam Emetera who left the football club. And uh, I will put him on a fullback because we're going to develop him as a fullback. Uh, and I do believe that his stats uh, are, are very, very good for the role and uh, he could definitely, definitely um, be a real, real addition uh, there. If not, I may look to develop him as a centre-back in the future because he's six foot four. He is a big lad to be playing at right back, but um, that's something we can think about in the future. He's only 20 years of age and he's joined the club for not much money at all, uh, about £3 million. And I just think this is a great, great deal. It was his release clause. It was all they were going to take, uh, but he's definitely one of those players we could develop for the future. And next up, we've got uh, Mile Milelic. I think this is how we're saying it. I'm not even going to try and say the first name. A Croatian centre midfielder, 10 caps for his country already at the age of 21. He's come into the club for just over £6 million. Four star potential player already with a view to get even better. And this here is an exciting player. Can play in the majority of the positions in the centre midfield. I was going to look to develop him as an attacking midfielder, but I actually think he might give us something in the centre mid. And I I stopped it after we picked up a few injuries in pre-season uh, but what a player he looks overall technical mental and physicals all very very good and I'm looking ex I'm very very excited to use this guy this season and next up we've got Carlos Martinez and this is a player I've been tracking for the last couple of seasons uh, I've been scouting him seeing what he's like and I've now bitten the bullet and thrown it in and put a bid in of 40 million pound they accepted it and it's an absolute steal at 40 million if you ask me ladies and gentlemen and Mexican international plays centre back we needed some quality cover there Cash Jansen was starting to kick off that we didn't have enough you know quality cover at the position and I brought him in at just the right time because Robson went down injured and uh, yeah he is currently three and a half star with a view to be you know uh 
sort of like almost four and a half star if we can get him there. 40 grand a week as well is next to no wages and I think this could be and prove a very astute signing this season. And the last player we've brought in to the club, ladies and gentlemen, is Martin Stringle. And this guy is basically replacing Casey Palmer. I think he's twice the player, but he's cost us a lot of money. We broke our transfer record once again by bidding £25.5 million for the player. They accepted it, though. He's come to the football club. He's on quite a big wage, but I think this guy could really go far and he's definitely one for the future. 22 years of age, an Italian international. Uh, three and a half star, current ability with a view to reach four stars. And, uh, yeah, he should be good stuff for the football club. He's currently injured, though. Twist his ankle in training just before our first game of the season. So we probably won't see him in today's episode, but he's definitely going to be one that's going to be a big, big player in our first Champions League campaign this season. And that's all the transfer dealings done and dusted, my friends. There were a few other players that left the club. Brandon Barker left on a free transfer. We just released him from his contract. Uh, and there were a few youngsters that I released as well. But I didn't really really feel like I needed to cover them. Now, as far as the competition screen is concerned, this is what the board is expecting of us this season. Uh, Carabao Cup, they want us to reach the fourth round. They want us to reach the fifth round of the FA Cup. That's where we got to last season. So as the Champions League is concerned, uh, they want us to reach the group stage. Now, I said uh, in the review episode that I thought we were probably going to have to qualify for the Champions League, but it turns out we're going to go straight in at the group stage. And I think that's as a result of England, uh, the English Premier League being the top league um, you know, in the, uh, in the game. Uh, as far as the English Premier League is concerned, a top half finish is what's expected of us. And really, that is something we should be achieving. We've done it the last two seasons. There's nothing to say we can't do it this year because I do think this is the strongest squad we've had to this point. And the last thing that I want to share with you guys before we crack on today is pre-season. And you will see pre-season went very, very well. Uh, a 1-0 win against uh, uh, Amiens was, uh, was a good result. Ildemar with the goal. We then, uh, you know, got a 5-0 victory against uh, Berlin Kopernik. Um You'll see Jody Jones, Rui Pedro and Felice Diamico with the goals. Uh, we then had a 5-3 against Nunny and, um, you know, an affiliate of ours. 5-3 um, is pretty mental when you actually think about it. But Neto, um, Pedro, Stringle and Cullen with the goals in the game. We had a 3-1 win against Lex uh, Lexos. Um, Rui Pedro with two. Martin Stringle. Uh, Andrew Robertson, C. Red in the game. And then our last preseason game was against Far uh, Farinese. And it was a 1-1 draw. Rui Pedro with the goal again. He had a phenomenal preseason. And I'm hoping... Hoping he can take it into the season this year and we open our season with a big game against Everton. Um, so let's get to it, ladies and gentlemen, because that was a lot of admin to get through already. And well, this is the team we're going to go with and the team we're going to take to Goodison to try and beat Everton in the opening day of this season. We're going to go with Connor Ripley in goal, Maffeo and Robertson at fullback. Martinez is going to be making his debut as a result of Robertson's injury next to Cash Janssen. Cullen and Milicic are going to make the uh, centre-mid partnership their own in the game. Uh, I will let you know that Nati is injured and uh, Stringle is injured as well. So we're a bit strugg we're struggling a little bit in midfield. Felice Diamico and Neto are going to make up the wings I am giving Neto another season but if he can't you know produce what I need him to this year he will be seeing the exit door Christian Lenk is going to come in and play attacking midfield and we're going to go with that man Rui Pedro he's got 50 odd goals in two seasons for us incredible stuff let's hope he can start this season with a bang let's do this it's only Everton I've probably said that and we're going to lose now but season three is our biggest yet so here we go, ladies and gents. Everyone gets kicked off in the game, opening game of the season. And uh, the only thing I'm a bit worried about is maybe I've made one too many changes to this starting lineup. Too many new signings coming in. Don't know how well they've gelled. But um, early in the game, Martinez goes back to Ripley. Um, comes into Janssen. Out to Robertson. In to Neto. And we really need something more from him this season. It finds length, though. Pretty good from him. Length keeps going. Oh. Neto just couldn't get there, but he has, he's got there, and Rui Pedro, early goal, 1-0, we need to get a result from this game, when you see the run of fixtures we've got after this one, you'll understand why, right, 13, 14 minutes almost gone, Lenk on the ball, after a throw from Mafeo, that's a lovely ball, up the wing, Diamico, drive the cross in, but no one could get on the end of it, and Everton do have it, and they... Could be good on the on the counter attack. They've got two very good strikers uh, as far as speed is concerned. But we've got the ball back. Lenk had it, but it's a good challenge from their fullback. And uh, Everton with it again. And 
Oh, are they going to build something now? Valencia on the ball. Oh, that's a lovely ball. Cutting us open. Sandro with the finish. What are the centre-backs doing there? To 25 minutes gone in this first half. It's still 1-1. It's still pretty even. Anyone's game there for the taking. Uh, Christian Lenk not having the best of games, but we do have a throw in now. And Robertson with it into Lenk. Into Milovic, into Diamaco, has got challenged, but it, oh, it came to Lenk, he had the shot and nothing come of it. And now Martinez does well to clean that up. Ripley comes out to Maffeo and can we build again? Ball into Diamaco, finds Lenk, into Rui Pedro. That's a great challenge. If he had got it past the defender there, he was definitely in on goal. But Pickford kicks the ball out. Can we win? Yes, we can. Rui Pedro on it again, gets challenged again. Is this actually going to go anywhere for us or is this going to be another Everton attack? And uh, it's never an attack. Valencia through. Good save from Ripley though. Oh, corner right at the end of the half. Sandro with a shot and it just goes wide. Jesus Christ, my heart skipped a beat. All right, throw in. Robertson into Milovic. Don't lose this now. Only two minutes added on in this half. Rui Pedro, there we have it. Makes it 2-1. A brilliant time to score just before half time. Get in there. That's a good first half. 2-1 in the lead. Happy, happy days. Now, I am going to pull Christian Lenk off and bring Marcus Brown on. Uh, I just think Christian Lenk sometimes, his size... Uh, it, it just goes against him. He's so short and um, he just doesn't get in the game sometimes. And there's some big players at the back for Evan. So we're going to bring Marcus Brown on, see if he could be a bit more effective. Right, the ball has come out into Maffeo. That's a it's just dangerous looking ball, but it just didn't find anyone. But Neto now, that's a lovely ball up the wing to Robertson. If he can cut it back, Diamaco. Oh, and Rui Pedro with the hat trick. And they've combined again. Diamaco and the Pedro. It's 3-1. Come on. Right, throw in. Robertson doesn't find a player. Ramsey instead with the ball. But that's well won back. Brown, can he finish? Of course he can. It's 4-1. That should be game, set and match. This is how we needed to start the season. And Everton with the throw in. It's been a very action-packed game, this one. Martinez well headed into Rui Pedro. Doesn't, doesn't find anyone. He gets tackled instead by Ram Salah. Valencia could be in. Good ball to De La Cruz. Great save. From Ripley, well cleared out. Oh my god, and a double save from him as the ball comes back in. Unreal stuff. Right, Pickford, goal kick. Everton have kind of turned it up a little bit since we went far one to the good. Um, but can we can we continue this? Martinez back to Ripley. Good goal, good kick out. And that's nice though, because that header hasn't worked. And Rui Pedro with his fourth goal in the game makes it five. Motherfucking one. Well, we are going to make a change, ladies and gents. We're going to just try and protect some of the players. We're going to bring Ildemar on for Joshy Coles. We're going to swap him and um, Milovic around. Um, Milovic, Milovic, Milovic. We're going to play you deep line support. And we are going to play... Um, we're going to play him as a central midfielder on support. And, uh, yeah, lovely old job. Right, throw in now. Robertson with it. Into Brown. Into Rui Pedro. Diamico, that's 6-1, ladies and gentlemen. This is an absolute rampage. We've made them look so ordinary. Right, 75th minute of the game. I was about to bring Rui Pedro off to a stand innovation because he's been incredible in this fixture. But we're going to just let this run first. And <laughs> Rui Pedro, he gives the ball away. Unbelievable. Um, the game that he's had. And that ball, he's going to find Sandro. What are the defence doing all over the place? And that's a great save from Ripley once again. But I am going to make that change now. We're going to bring Rui Pedro off and give Mamadou Kande a run out in the game. Uh, I am actually going to go to defend with uh, Ildemar, just because I feel like we've opened up a little bit. And we are into the final seconds of the game. And what an opening weekend win this is for us. 6-1 victory against Everton. And trust me, ladies and gentlemen, when you see the fixtures, that's going to be so, so important. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen, back at the fixture screen. And as you can see, a 6-1 win to start the season is unbelievable. But 
it was very important. And the reason why I say that is look at the next three games. Um, Man United, Chelsea, Manchester City. Um, I'm going to play Man United and Chelsea um, because they were the runaway teams last year. And I'm still not sure if we're strong enough to beat them. Uh, and plus, we've got the Champions League coming up. So what I'm going to do for next episode is come back for the Manchester City game, who we've had a relatively good record against in recent seasons, and our opening fixture of the Champions League group stage. And you will obviously find out next episode who we have uh, in that competition. Uh, and then after that, we'll have to wait and see. But that's what I plan to do. I hope you guys are cool with that. But before we leave, let's take a look at that league table. And after one game, ladies and gents, Coventry City sit top of the league, uh, mainly because of goal difference, because we absolutely hammered Everton a great way to start the season, I'm sure you will all agree. And to think I was worried about uh, too many new players being in that squad, and uh, but they all did a fantastic job for the football club, didn't they? So uh, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Um, and yeah, so we'll be back next time with Champions League and Manchester City, but um, what a way to start the season. So there you are, my friends. That's the end of another episode of FM80's The Commentary Conundrum. We get our third season of the Premier League kicked off in incredible style. I'm sure you will all agree. Remember, if you're new to the channel, like, share, and subscribe. It really is appreciated by your boy. Uh, but that is it from me. I'll be back on Wednesday when we play Manchester City and we get our first ever Champions League game underway. So I hope to see you then. But until then, I've been Dan. You've been Legends. And this has been FM18's The Coventry Conundrum. Peace out, my homies. I salute you all six times, but I'm only going to do it once. And I'll see you then for that big, big episode. Hey, yes, my friends.